As an actor and director, Gopala Davies has remained true to his passion for drama on stage and screen. He's versatile and quite fearless about the roles and productions he undertakes. And he's someone I've been wanting to talk to for ages. You, you know, I, I Gopala Davies can you, construct an entire character with just a few so words, gestures uh, and expressions. The, the gifts you get me every year. Uh, as an actor and director, he's both professional and passionate about his craft and is always ready for fresh challenges. It is always so inspiring getting to know fellow actors and I'm super excited to meet Gopala Davies. I'm looking forward to getting to know him personally and professionally. Hey, sir. Hello, you. Thank you for Can having you? me. It's a pleasure, thank you for coming. Your place is amazing. Thank you. Gopala, what have been some of your favourite roles and productions to date? The two that come to mind are Mohammed in Cry Havoc and Alphonse Lebel in Scorched. Uh, Mohammed tells the story of an Egyptian male, a uh, young boy who is struggling with his sexuality, and Cry Havoc is a very complex story about war and love, so those definitely are my favourites. What inspires you as a writer, director and actor? Definitely things from my own life. I think it's very important to write or talk about what you know. You trained in the Meisner technique. Can you explain this to non-theatre audiences? Meisner resonates the best with me. I think Meisner talks about listening and shifting the ego from the self to the other. So an example would be uh, in this interview, as a person you're naturally nervous and it's your insecurities that come to the foreground. But the Meisner technique would say, Forget about yourself, place the focus on the person that you're with. Uh, listen and engage. I know that I've interrupted you on a rehearsal day and I have been dying to see you in action, so shall we? Yes, let's go. Gopala is also an acclaimed director with a Standard Bank Ovation Award. He also received a commission from the French Institute of South Africa to direct a production at the National Arts Festival. This is Iggy. Iggy, Zach. Hello. Hi. Thank nice you for letting you. me interrupt your rehearsal. Absolute pleasure. Yeah. Absolute pleasure. I hope you enjoy watching. I'm very excited. I'm going to just sit down and leave awesome. your shirt. Awesome. Okay, okay. Iggy, would you do the first part of Fawn and then we'll take it from there? Sure. We'll just pause there. Please go back to your first position. My main concern is the transition between this and sitting up. So it's there, up. When it's at its extremes, let it fall. Nice. That's cool. I'm just going to get my camera. Over there. Sure. Gopala, can you give us some background for the production you're rehearsing? This production is called Nijinsky's War and it's based on the life of Vaslav Nijinsky who was a renowned ballet dancer, uh, choreographer and the way that Iggy and I are uh, interpreting the piece is we're engaging with a South African context and Iggy's past of growing up on a farm. We're also including intermedial performance. What is intermedial theatre? This is a style that I've kind of developed over the past uh, four or five years where I include new media and new media means the recording of past footage projected in the cyclorama so the live actor engages with this performance um, and with the, the media. I'm so sorry for interrupting you, please carry on. Okay, so the point of this is we're recording footage to be projected later on. So you're going to be opening the book, you're going to be reading, and I want you to sway from side to side, very controlled, try not to move the rest of your body, but it's your upper body that's moving. Stand by, and action. I am a predator. I am a spiteful man. Not God, but a beast. Cut. Oh, I'm going to come squeeze in here. Yeah. Thanks. Awesome, that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Show. Thanks, nice meeting you. <laughs> cool. It's amazing watching you work when you have your director's cap on. What's in store for the rest of 2017? I'm acting in the Playhouse. We're doing Scorched in Durban. And thereafter I direct Tamasha on Hope Street at the Market Theatre. And in between the two I also have a movie that's being released called Woodwind. Tell us about the movie. It's a fascinating project. He's got a, a, an actor who's a Spanish actor. His name is Leandro Taub and he's uh, quite a name. Um, and I play an Indian from India. Can you give us a sneak peek of the character? The character's funny firstly because of the accent. So he's, um, oh in India we like to talk, we wear Indian clothes. Oh, yeah. For sure, for sure, for sure. 
every day we are talking in Indian, right? But you come to my house, I must feed you. You've played so many different characters from stage to screen. What are some of the fun ones that really stand out for you? On High Rollers, I played a British um, millionaire who wanted to buy the casino. So far, I've been very impressed. Your associate runs a tight ship. Oh, really? I hadn't noticed. My major concern is staff relations. I've played a call center agent. That was a very fun shoot. I'm fine, thank you, and thank you for asking. I was wondering if... Oh, it's not a good time. Well, all no's are different. No, sir. Um, no, sir, this is the first time I'm calling you. No. Some people get pretty inventive. Take your name off the system, yes. You met your father a few years ago and you used that experience to create a piece of theatre. How did that come about? My dad was abusive, so my mum had left the situation. So I had, obviously when I was a baby, he was around, but I hadn't met him at an age where I was able to engage and discuss. So, yeah, that's how meeting my dad inspired uh, Barber Blue, which engaged with mental illness. Thereafter, I did La Cenci, which is also a French story it told of Arto, who had mental illness. And now I'm doing Nijinsky's War, which we've just seen the rehearsal for, and that deals with mental illness through the life of Vaslav Nijinsky. Theatre plays a huge part in your life, and I know there's another huge part in your life, and I'd love to meet him. Of course. Let's go meet Nick. Nick? Hello! I'm gonna hug you. <laughs> and T, what an attentive hubby. How do you guys spend your spare time? Well, we love spending time at home. We love watching movies. Um, uh, we, we have um, lots of family time with his family is in Pretoria, so we either go to them or they come to us. And you have cats, like a hundred cats. Who's the cat lady? He had I all the cats. The original cat lady. Um, <laughs> and when I met him, so he, you had ten or did you have eight? Yeah, I, I had many. <laughs> um, so yes. the, the reason why he has many is because the mum had babies and he didn't want to take the babies yeah. away from the mum. What's next for you two? Babies? The real babies? <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's what we're working towards. Um, we are in the process of IVF and looking for a surrogate. So yeah, that's basically the next step. That's amazing. It is a process, but we're very excited to meet the young ones and yeah, <laughs> have a, a life with them. Gopala, what's your philosophy in life? Be ready for everything that comes and enjoy it. What advice do you have for aspiring actors, writers and directors out there? Tell your stories. I think very often people try to copy and I think South Africa is stuck in this, this uh, Western-centric vision of what success is meant to be. That's what we need to do, tell our stories. Thank you so much for such a fun day. Thank you for coming, it's been awesome. Cheers. 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 <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>